I am so excited to have so much enthusiasm, especially at what, four o'clock on a Wednesday, is it? In the summertime, so um, it's nice to be here. Uh, so I'm going to be focusing on question four from this past year's AP Computer Science exam. And really what I want you guys to get out of this is not only to learn about the question itself and how to grade it, but what you should be sharing with your students, because it's really important that your students understand what the questions look like. So in this question, the students were asked to take a list of strings and format them using a specific set of criteria. So the students needed to have knowledge of using array lists, using static methods, and students are also required to construct strings. Now, they don't have to use many of the methods that are in the Java subset on this particular question. They really just need to know how to concatenate strings, and they need to know how to write methods, which is a fundamental part of the AP exam. So before I go any further, I want you guys to read a little bit about the question, and what I'd like you to do is in the packet that I provided, just take a look at the first page of the packet and only the first page. And that's going to describe this question. And after you finish reading through the question, I want to make sure that everybody understands what the question is asking. So I'm going to have everybody to log on to Socrative.com. Has anyone used Socrative before? So a few, only a few people in the class have used Socrative. Socrative is a tool where I can get feedback from everybody, solicit feedback from everybody, and review that so that we can have a classroom discussion and everybody's voice is heard. So read through the first page of the packet, and then go ahead and log into Socrative.com using the student login, and I have the room number right there. And once you answer the question that's posted on Socrative, once everybody has a chance to answer that, we'll come back together. So take a few minutes to read that first. I use Socrative quite a bit for those multiple choice questions that the students are working on. At the end of each unit, I typically give a set of 10 questions for the students to, multiple choice questions for them to answer directly related to that unit. As the students, as the students complete those questions, they put their answers in Socrative. So then when it comes time for us to review, if I see that 80% of the class has a question correct. I say, talk to one of your friends. We're not going over this question. But if only 30% of the cl class got a question correct, then we'll go over the class, the, the question as a class. And what I will do also is I won't go over the question. I sit down, and I have somebody who got the question right explain it. Because when they hear it from one of their peers in their language, and it's also forcing the students to use the language of the questions to, uh, to become more comfortable. OK, so we've got 15 responses. Now, now I'd like you to actually try to do parts A, B, and C. So continue on. There's three parts. On the AP exam, students have about 22 minutes for each, hmm, for the entire question. So, so I think enough people are kind of finishing up or finished with part B that we'll jump into part B. And then we'll do something a little bit different on part C, because it is a little bit of a bigger problem. So with part B, I just want to point out a couple things about the way that the problem is presented, which confuses some people. Some students think that this might be the main method where things are being called, methods are being called. But this, it needs to be really clear, clear to the students that this is class information. This is the public. API, the Application Programming Interface. So these are the methods that are available in string formatter. And this is just a reference for them to look at so that they know total letters just has one parameter. Basic gap width has two parameters. So um, this is purely informational. Here's the canonical solution, which again, you've got on your blue sheets in the packet that you have in front of you. So essentially, what we need to do is we need to figure out how many spaces need to be distributed and how many gaps there are so we know how many spaces per gap there should be. So the number of gaps is pretty easy to figure out. If you know that there's three words in the list, 
there's two gaps. If there's four words in the list, there's three gaps. So that's why we have the word list size minus one, because that tells you the number of gaps that are in there. And the number of spaces, well, that's the length of the entire formatted string minus the total number of letters that we have. And that's exactly what we did in our first example of I am Sam. Now, can you guys guess what some common mistakes are that students made? They forgot the minus one, a very common mistake. So they forgot to get the number of gaps, they just got the number of words. That's one common mistake. What's another common mistake? Rhea? Absolutely. If you forget to use the parentheses, mathematically it just doesn't make sense. Now what I did see many students do, which is perfectly valid, they wrote this in four lines of code so that they didn't need any parentheses. That's perfectly fine. They don't have to write the shortest piece of code. It just has to work. It doesn't have to be efficient. It doesn't have to be pretty. It just has to work. So parentheses was another common mistake. Any other common mistakes that you might find? I know Chris? Yes. So the formatted length here is a parameter. And you need to use that parameter. I would say 99.9% .9 of the time, if you're given parameters, you're going to be using those parameters. And 20 was specifically from the examples that were provided. So the number 20 should not be used here. It has to be the length that's provided. So that was a common mistake. Any other common mistakes? Oh, um, I would say one out of every 10 students put 20 instead of the formatted length, at, at least, at least. Any other common mistakes? I'll tell you another one. Oh, yeah. Like what I was doing, yeah, but what I was doing. What, and what did you do, Abby? I wrote word list. I didn't really know how to, I was, I was like this, dot, total letters, word list. I was confusing calling that operation on a array list. Exactly. So that was another common mistake in this. So. Students didn't know how to call total letters. And since we looked at the in public interface before, we saw that total letters, and we just wrote total letters. It's a static method. So if you said this dot total letters, that would not be correct. Because this does not, I use the word this, because total letters does not operate on an object. What could you put in front of total letters that would be correct? And think back to the math class, the math examples. Could you what are the, name of the, classes? The, name of the class. The name of the class, which is? Maybe you can look it up. String formatter. So if they said string formatter dot total letters, that would be correct. Oh, absolutely. Some students used string formatter. Some people said word list dot total letters. That's absolutely not correct because word list is an array list and total letters is not a method of the array list class. So those were a couple of common mistakes that we saw on this particular solution. So let's go to the scoring guidelines for this. And you can discreetly score your own. We don't need to know what your scores are. This is for personal use only. And this is the way I do it with my students also. I have my students grade their own papers the first few times. And once they're comfortable grading their own papers, and then they might hand it to me and I might grade them to make sure that they're correct. And we, we grade them together. But then maybe they'll swap with a partner and they'll grade each other's. So I try to mix it up in class so that they're able to see other people's solutions and so that they get feedback from me, but also from other people, because it's important for them to understand how these are being graded and how harshly they're graded on some simple, simple errors. So that forces them to be very, very precise. Okay, so the first point, this is two points out of nine. The first point is that they call total letters correctly and they have to use the result. So if 
If you just tell a student, hey, if it says assume it uses correctly, just make sure you call it. Well, they couldn't just call it. They had to use the answer in some way. And then they had to return the correctly calculated value. So they had to do the subtraction and division correctly with the appropriate parentheses. So even if they call total letters incorrectly, they could still get the correctly calculated value. Because I'll forgive, I'll, I'll take the point off there, but I won't, I won't double ding them. Okay, so questions on part C, oh, part B. How many of you have had a chance to read through part C already? Okay, so here's what I want to do for part C. I want to have everybody read through part C. Don't start writing it. I want you to talk to your partner about what your algorithm would be, and let's talk about the algorithm before you try to handwrite your solution. Okay, so read through part C, talk to your neighbor. We'll do a think pair share on this. Talk to your neighbor and see if you can um, come up with an algorithm. 